Hi everybody, it's Andrea. Um, yeah, it's been, it's like half week, well, we're almost towards the end of June, it's nearly the 20th of June, it's going to be the 21st before you see this, I think. And I haven't told you what I read in the month of June. Now, I'm not going to go through all the books, just the physical ones, because I read so many Kindle books, uh, it's unreal. In fact, the first of the, the Kindle books I read, I read a box set called The Ghostly Glenwood Mysteries by B. I. Skinner. Very good series about this ghost whisperer named Holly, who obviously can see and talk to ghosts. Um, she moves there because she was forced to resign or leave her previous job because she was so she had anger issues and part of the reason is because she was hiding who she was didn't want them to know that she was a ghost whisperer because of, of the way people would react but when she moves to Glenwood there are ghosts everywhere there's even one living in her house in fact there's two a human and a ghost cat it was a very good funny series some of the stories were better than others but I really enjoyed it it's worth checking out it's on Kindle Unlimited but let's go through there were six books in that series by the way I'm gonna go through the physical books that I read in May. Gosh, I can't believe that it's May. It's, it's nearly the end of June. I haven't read as much this month. You'll be safe next month, I promise. So I read Jodie Pico's A Spark of Light. This tells the story kind of backwards. So we start at the end and it goes towards the beginning when you find out exactly who, um, why, uh, etc. But this is basically at a, a gunman takes doctors and patients uh, prisoner at a controversial abortion clinic. Um, however, the hostage negotiator's daughter is one of the people there. Now, she's not there for an abortion. It's not just an abortion clinic. It's a women's health clinic. Um, so she went to get the pill. Because, you know, people are stupid and they think just because it's a women's health clinic is all abortions because that's all women do. So, basically, we have the story from the point of view of uh, Ren. I think her name is Ren. That's the daughter. We've got the, the the father who's the hostage negotiator. He shouldn't be there, but he he started before he realised his daughter was there. Then you've got obviously got the person who take the hostage, the people hostage. You've got his daughter who had the abortion. Um, you've got anti-abortionists, people who are the people who um, escort people into the clinic to keep them safe from the stupid protesters outside. I'm sorry, I am pro-choice. I will always be pro-choice. It's nobody's business what goes on in a woman's uterus, except for hers. And I say a woman, I don't care what pronouns you use. If you've got a uterus, regardless, I'm not going to call you a woman, I'm just going to say you've got a uterus. Nobody, nobody business what goes on inside your uterus, except for yours. Okay? But there you go. Anyway, it's a really, really hard-hitting book, actually. It's You do see both points of view, but it's really quite sad. But I did enjoy it. I think I gave it three or four stars. Three and a half. Before I Go to Sleep by C.L. Taylor. Um, so this tells the story of this girl, Christine, this woman, Christine, who every time she wakes up in the morning, she can't remember herself, her husband, her life she can't remember anything and it, it, it's like she gets bits back throughout the day because uh, there's notes everywhere telling her who she is what she does what her husband's name is and so on but she has no idea she forgets it all so she does start seeing a, a doctor who tells her to keep a journal and he says I'll ring you every morning to tell you where you've put your journal so you can find it then you can read what you've written about what happened the day before and it might help trigger your memories and in the end it does and all is not as it seems it was a really good book I love this book I bought another one by CL Taylor simply because I adored this book it was a four star read go get it I finally read Six of Clothes by Crow blah 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 by Lee Bardugo and I did enjoy it I have got Crooked Kingdom but I haven't read it yet so Everybody knows this book. There's uh, six people who, um, oh gosh, got it. Go to the ice court to do a heist, a big heist. It's really good. Obviously, you've got to a bit of backstory first. I don't know anything about the Grishaverse until I picked up this book. I've read any Lee Bardugo. This is the first one. I really enjoyed it. And I will be reading Six of Crows, A uh, Cricket Kingdom, and getting some more, I think, in the near future. So it's a good four out of five for me. One of my favourite books ever. I read this years ago. I had a paperback copy I bought from Mazda for a pound. Lent it to a friend, took it on holiday, dropped it in the swimming pool. I bought a copy for about three quid on eBay. 
in hardback because I'm collecting this author in hardback if I can and it is Peter James Prophecy so this is not like his normal books everybody knows Peter James because of the Roy Grace series and the TV series starring John Sim now it's fantastic um, love the Roy Grace series I do read them I am collecting them but this is an earlier standalone novel and it's one of his supernatural stories because he does write a lot of supernatural stories which I love them um, in this one we have this girl Francis or Francesca she's Italian Franny who she's going to visit her friend and take her uh, cello back to her friend and a, a nice man with his young son helps her onto the train he then runs an ad in a magazine that she never reads but happens to pick up that the day that the ad is in there looking for her and they get together and they start a relationship however we do have a bit of backstory in the fact that some six years before his wife was killed um, in London in an accident and Francesca actually witnessed it because the, it was outside the coffee shop that her mum and dad ran um, so when the guy and the boy looked familiar she couldn't quite place it until he told her what had happened to his wife and not long before that Three of, uh, six of her friends or a load of her friends and her had c conducted a Ouija board in the basement of their house which you of the the coffee shop which used to be the house of one of the ancestors of the guy that she's just met and then six years later all the prophecies that came through from the Ouija board start coming true but they're not it's not like oh you're gonna die it's cryptic so one girl had the prophecy and I'm not going to tell you more, I'm just going to tell you this one one arm bandit and this is the girl who starts putting it together along with our heroine Francesca and she is hit by a lorry while she's on her bike and her arm is amputated so now she's only got one arm so she's the one arm bandit so they're cryptic like that but very very clever it's five stars from me for this this is I think this was the first Peter James book I read and I absolutely adored it this is what got me on my Peter James journey it's a journey I haven't finished there's still lots more to read I haven't read all the, all the Roy Grace ones even though I'm collecting them um, but that's what I'm doing now uh, when I buy books from eBay I'm looking for hardback Peter James that I haven't got so oh I love this book The Lost Bookshop by Evie Woods <sighs> Again. oh that was five star this was five star I think oh I loved it uh, quite a street in Dublin a bookshop that isn't there then you've got the characters Martha Henry and Opaline they're the main characters and then you've got the woman that Martha goes to work for who's an enigma in herself so Opaline lives in the early 1900s women are, are fighting for the vote she is of a well-to-do middle-class family who's expected to marry well they don't have any money father's died so her brother is trying to force her to marry a man she doesn't work now Opaline is into books her father was into books and he used to, she used to read to him while he was dying etc etc so she runs away to Dublin several times she gets dragged back to be married off to this man and at one point she's put in a mental asylum because she refused to do it however she does escape it's wonderful but she does have a child who she doesn't know who it is because uh, it's taken away from her because it's Ireland and it's in the early years of the 20th century so into the modern day we've got Martha Martha is running away from her abusive husband who beats her and she's run to Dublin where she gets a job as a housekeeper from this mysterious old woman she lives in the basement she pretty much hides herself she isn't really into reading but every now and again she has a vivid dream and there are words in her dream that form a story and she has them tattooed on her back which is really bizarre why not just write them down and then there's Henry Henry is a young Englishman he's come to Dublin because he's searching for Opaline he's searching for the lost bookshop which there's no record of ever having been in that location which is where Martha lives and um, he becomes friends with Martha they fall in love obviously and they're trying to figure out what uh, Opaline well not what Opaline had but where Opaline put this thing she found and where she what happened to her over the years what happened to the bookshop where did it go it was there it's such a clever book I loved it it was it was so good if you haven't read it you've got to read it 
I read the next one in the Wizard of Oz uh, collection, the Oz series, which was The Road to Oz, I believe. Yes. Because next is, is it Emerald City? Yes. So I read The Road to Oz. So again, this takes the story of Dorothy. Um, she's out walking with a, a person she's trying to help them and they end up on a road that they don't seem to know where they're going and they end up of course in Oz basically that's the story <laughs> it's really good you have some lovely lovely thing you have like polychrome which is the, the fairy from um, part of the rainbow rainbow's daughter she was really sweet I do love these Oz stories I will be reading this next one in this book soon because this is something like whimsical and sweet. Everybody bangs on about how much they love Alice in Wonderful Wonderland. I don't particularly like Alice in Wonderland. I prefer The Wizard of Oz. That's just me. I don't collect particular like volumes of books. I know there are people who collect volumes of Alice in Wonderland and I don't blame them. That's, that's, that's their prerogative. Me, I, I don't. I w if I was going to collect anything, it would be Black Beauty because that's one of my favorite novels. Lies, Lies, Lies by Adele Parks. So Daisy and Simon um, are in a marriage. They have a daughter, Millie. Um, Simon's a bit of an alcoholic. Um, they're trying to have another child, but they, they, they just can't. And Simon's told he can't physically have children. He can't have them. He cannot get his wife pregnant, but they have a daughter, so it's a bit weird. And then Simon's convinced that his wife was having an affair with somebody, and that's how Millie came about. It's not true, but there's some weird stuff going on there. And then one night he is drunk and he insists on driving home and they have an accident and Millie is hurt and her dream of being a dancer is um, wrecked. Basically they crash into Millie, but it all is not as it seems. Simon goes to prison and Daisy can't remember everything. But this story tells you how Daisy remembers eventually what happened and we find out how Millie came to, into existence. Pupil by Stephen King. This is one of the short stories from one of his other books, which I can't remember. Does it say on here? No. Uh, basically, it's the story of a young boy, a teenager, who figures out that one of his neighbours is a German, former German Nazi, Nazi camp man uh, in charge of um, torturing and killing thousands of people during the war. So he starts um, blackmailing him. Now, he, Todd was a lovely pupil, he was really nice, but because he gets into all this dark history, he changes. And it's really, 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 really creepy and horrible and dark and definitely worth a read. There are only two left, I'm doing this quick because I've got to go get you in a minute. I read this one, this was a birthday present last June. And the new one's out, and I want the new one. Um, this is A Death in the Parish by the Reverend Richard Coles. So in this book, the parishes have been aligned and he is now in charge of helping a new canon come into the area. Um, this guy, they're very, very ultra conservative religion. Everything's by the Bible. Um, but their son and daughter are goth simply because they're rebelling, they're teenagers, and then the son is murdered. And Daniel Clement has to figure out, or doesn't have to, but he does figure out who killed the boy and why. Very, very good. Better than the first one because we have the backstory, we know who Daniel is. Uh, Richard Coles did all the backstory, all the world building, character building in the first story, so we know these characters, and he's just bringing in new characters as needed. So it's not as a trudge. First novels can always be a trudge. Then it still was a very, very good story. But this one was much better. I really enjoyed it. I think I gave this one four stars. And the last book, yeah, the last book I'm going to talk about is uh, this book. I've had this for years. The Misfits, the story of The Misfits by James Good. So this tells the story of the making of the 1960 film The Misfits by Arthur Miller, written by Arthur Miller, directed by John Huston, starring Marilyn Monroe and Clark Gable. Um, there's a story behind me getting this book. I was first offered this book in the mid 90s in London in a bookshop called the Cinema Bookshop, which is sadly no longer there. Um, I'd gone in to buy Bert Stone's Complete Last Sit-In uh, and 
that's what I wanted. I was determined to get them. It was £70. And I was offered this book instead. Well, as well. I mean, he said, I know you want the Bert Stern book, and I get that, but this book is really rare, which it was. It is. Um, you probably won't ever see another copy of this, and this is £70 as well. And I was like, now I really want the last sit in. So I bought the last complete last sit in by Bert Stern. Not long before Covid, a couple of years before Covid, this came up on eBay. £15. So I'm really glad I did spend 70 quid on it back in the 90s and I got, got it for 15 on eBay instead. Now, down to the crux of it, basically it tells the story of the film of the Misfits, how it came to be, everything leading up to it and afterwards with Clark Cable's death. Um, James Good, uh, who was editor, a reporter, etc, etc, he went and he recorded all the things that happened on the second film, well most of them anyway, there's more that come out years later. And he, most importantly, he spoke to the people involved. So we've got first-hand accounts from Clark Gable, Paula Strasberg, John Houston, Arthur Miller, Eli Wallach, Monty Cliff, <coughs> Thelma Ritter, and he spoke to Marilyn, but only briefly. There's not a lot of input from Marilyn in the book. But it is a really, really good take on what happened during the making of The Misfits. And we've got now uh, a book called The Misfits, um, with mostly photographs. And essays which was authored by someone with Arthur Miller, uh, Sergi somebody I believe and of course we've got documentaries on the making of the Misfits and this is a nice complimentary book to go with it. Hardback, I do believe there was a paperback released, I've never seen a copy um, except for on the internet occasionally but this, if you find it pick it up but don't pay a huge amount for it, the internet has made the world so much smaller like I said, I got this for 15. This may have been the copy I was offered for 70 because there's not that many copies around. It may well have been somebody actually purchased it for 70 and then sold it for 15 later on. I don't know. But don't pay a fortune for it. It is out there. Just wait. You will find it. Um, yeah, really, really enjoyed that. So those are the physical books I read in May. I will try to do June's really quicker. I'm not going to guarantee it, but I'm really going to try. Um, like I said, I haven't read as much this month so far, um, but I've coloured more, so that's why. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm going to go and get Jennifer, and I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye, my friends. Bye.